It's been a week of energy company reports and the results tell us how much of a boost the recent gains in the price of oil have been improving the balance sheets or at least limiting the losses. But can the energy sector ever resume its dominating status and does it all really rest upon the price of a barrel? James Bevan of CCLA is here with me now to talk about the price of oil and indeed the implications for the oil industry as a whole. Hello, Chi. Thank you for coming into the studio. Good to be here. Yeah, so as I say, um, is it really these gains that we've been witnessing in terms of the, the earnings and results and trading statements? Is it all about the price per barrel? The price, and I guess that we have to have an overall issue for markets, which is that the, the bull bear ratio for the US equity market, for example, is now at three and three quarters, traditionally a sell signal, whereas a year ago it was less than one, a great buying signal. So this is a moment where we have to be very selective. Okay. Um, what about other factors as well? Because when it comes to oil, there's always um, conflicts and politics at play too. How much of a game changer is Saudi Arabia and their oil strategy? I think it's really important because Saudi has has been the swing producer in terms of both being able to cut back supply but also to increase capacity. And it is clear to me that Saudi is now much more concerned with trying to have a slightly firmer price because it recognises this policy of very low pricing which had been designed perhaps to ensure that America remained a, a, a firm supporter of, of Saudi both economically but also politically hadn't been working. Okay, and do you go with the idea that um, Saudi Arabia was just out to crush the uh, US shale industry, which has had a resurgence as well? Yeah, I absolutely think that is a big part of the equation. I think the other part is that Saudi has recognised that it cannot persist on oil revenues forever. It does have to fundamentally change the structure of its economy, and therefore, by extension, it needs to have a plan as to where its economy will be after the oil has run out. This year, I would expect the Saudi economy to grow by around 2 percentage points, excluding oil, which is an immeasurably better performance than we saw last year. Mm -hmm. And what about OPEC as a whole? Do you think that they are playing by the game? Well, OPEC as a, a body corporate has found it extremely difficult to have a cohesive approach to setting the oil price. And in that sense, they have also lost some control because non-OPEC uh, oil producers have become a much more significant part of the equation mm. and their incentives of course are rather different to those of OPEC. Mm -hmm. What are they then? Well a big chunk of it has been trying to get foreign currency revenues and therefore there has been a preparedness to allow the price to drop in order to get more volume through the system to get the foreign currency to come in uh, and that has been a significant driver of the oversupply that we have seen. The other equation of course is what's happening on the demand side and we spend a lot of time thinking about supply, 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 when of course the vibrancy of the global economy suddenly becomes a really important part of the overall equation that sets price. And we have non-oil sources of energy becoming increasingly competitive, so that now has to go into the mix as well. Mm -hmm. And we had supply uh, numbers coming out this week, didn't we, that were actually soaring. They were tremendous results. And at the same time, demand from China has been stalling slightly. Yes, it has. It's very clear that the trajectory of China's growth has been less than some of the bulls had uh, anticipated. So although China is a hugely important factor, it isn't the same driver of demand that had previously been anticipated. Mm -hmm. OK, James, let's um, crack on and talk about some companies. What are you eyeing up and who's doing well at the moment in this current environment? Well, it seems to me the first thing we have to do is to lay out some assumptions of what will happen to the oil price. Yeah, go and for I'm it. assuming that in 2017 we're going to see a price move gently up to around $60, $62. 2018, a further move up to around $65. And it's on that basis that I think that the free cash flow yield of the international integrated oil company companies can improve from the current level where actually prices discount a future that we have not yet got to. So an awful lot is being taken on trust at the moment. The only company that I think justifies its position in the portfolio as of today would be Royal Dutch Shell. And I say that because Royal Dutch Shell is able to get significant benefits on an ongoing basis from its takeover of BG. Mm -hmm. It also has a very clear path towards improving earnings through sensible divestment. And I think that the dividend yield that they are paying, which is around 7 percentage points, is sustainable. And therefore, there will be ongoing demand for the shares of that company. 
In the States, I do think it's also smart to have a play on fracking because fracking is, as we know, a huge source of low-cost hydrocarbon energy. And there, Marathon Petroleum Company, which operates on the eastern side of the United States, mm -hmm. I think is extremely well placed. So those are the two big picks for me. If I am wrong in my relatively cautious view on the oil price and the oil price continues to rise dramatically, mm -hmm. then I'd be a buyer of Chevron. Okay, why is that? Because Chevron, if we would get $65 plus, perhaps $70, $70, suddenly achieves a very high free cash flow yield, which I think would lead to a significant shift up in the share price. But because that shift in the oil price is not my central scenario, I'm quite cautious of Chevron at these prices. OK. And do you have a B plan in case oil goes in the other direction? Well, I still think that we need to understand portfolio balance and therefore to have a zero weighting in oil either requires you to take a very long-term view and say, I don't want to be in the hydrocarbons at all, in which case I think we should be looking at companies involved in energy efficiency, companies like Legrand, which is a producer of uh, dials, controllers, measuring devices, all designed to ensure that we get the maximum bang for our buck spent on energy. And there I think we could easily see the shares move up to around 60 euros. So the recent relatively pedestrian share price progress I think represents a long-term buying opportunity. And that's a sort of B plan. I don't think there's anything in the alternative energy space which is compelling at current levels. So I'd be sitting that side out completely. Okay. And um, the problem with the going back to the US shale companies is obviously when the price um, rises they start producing more and then we've got this cyclical supply issue once again. I completely agree, and that's why it's a very difficult to make a strong investment case. You can say, yes, the fundamentals are improving. I'd say right now, good fundamentals are already baked in the share price cake. In other words, there's not much more to go for. If it isn't as good as the market has anticipated, a lot of these share prices are going to come down with a thump. And I'd be very wary of companies that are ostensibly paying dividends out of profits that they have never accrued. And you can see this from the free cash flow yield. If you go into a company's reporting accounts and look through where the free cash flow yield is negative, where the repair and maintenance capex is value destructive. So the incremental return on capital employed is, is low or not there at all. Those are the sorts of companies to avoid, and there are a lot of them in this sector. Okay. And in conclusion, you're saying oil prices are going to go up and the dark days are over potentially for these oil companies. Well, I am saying that if you are a well-run company with a strong strategy, you are reasonably well placed even in a climate of relatively slow oil price movements. And for me, that means focusing on Royal Dutch Shell as the pick of the sector. To play US Shale, for me, it's Marathon Petroleum. Mm -hmm. To play efficiency, it's Legrand. And those are the only three sector, three participants in the energy continuum that I would be looking for right now. All right, James Bevan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you that's very, very much. clear for us. Um, from CCLA, that's uh, James Bevan talking to us today about the energy sector in 2017. Thank you for watching.